Hello, House of Destiny. We have a new Boots on the Ground missions update just for you. And we are going to update you on all of the things that we have our hands into with your seeds of love. Starting with Raja, um, they actually have a TAPVC, and that is a critical congenital condition of the heart needing to be corrected in early infancy in order to survive. So their life is dependent on having a surgery. And it's very interesting because the parents had to travel by train for many hours all throughout the night to be able to get to a specific location to for their child to receive this heart surgery and it was funded by your giving so what a miracle came through that surgery with flying colors and Raja is doing well and expected to live a full life and Miles was born with a large hole between the ventricle of his heart and he was significantly smaller than all the other children his age and unfortunately the family again same situation was unable to afford the surgery needed to save his life but our unity program was able to get him in and get the entire surgery funded and that was all because of your giving. So with your seeds of love, these are just two examples of what that does. It goes to save lives, to give hope, to give a future. So your seeds of love aren't falling on infertile ground. It's falling on something that can grow and blossom into true life and have a long life. So you are supplying miracles in children just like these all over the world. If you are watching and you are not yet a partner and you're like, man, I have to become a part of that. Just click the link right there on your screen. Become a partner with us today and let's continue to impact children's lives all around the world. Your name. We magnify your name. 
already? Yes. I can feel that many of you have been praying. Many of you have been praying and it's already happening. That I speak not only of Israel, but nations that have sought to bring my name to nothing. Can you bring breath to nothing? I am the eternal breath, says the Lord. I speak and it returns not to me. Void until it is established that which I've set it out to do. Today I will expose, I will reveal for you have entered into a time and a season of undercover where I will bring out from the covers the truth for there have been too many lies one lie after the other covered in high national positions that have affected the globe that have affected the seas they've affected the skies America you not as secure as you think you are but in my kingdom there are people that are praying and they are prof prophetic words and the truth from my word that will preserve my nations for the purpose of extending my light to the next generation says the Lord there are two E's that I see one E is the word erupt the other is earthquake many are prophesying about earthquakes but there is a national park where there is an eruption under the earth for it to come out and many say it is just simply an eruption but it is not it is a sign that I shall contain that which would try and be destructive in this nation a volcano as a sign and then there will be another earthquake says the Lord keep your eyes open for this sign is to cause the earth to yield of its produce that the great E may come forth rapidly this is my promise says the Lord therefore take heed today as you come to me and strike the rock I will release that which has been held back from you and cause triumph to be sounded in your mouths says the Lord come on. Welcome everybody to a very, very powerful experience with God. I, I, you may stop because you know it's just going to carry on with me. And I'm gonna, I want to get you down to back to India. And it's very difficult when you have that one moment, that celestial light that comes to you. It's very difficult to, you know, sort of come down to earth and to speak about things. But you know, the one thing we've got to realize is that the Spirit has drawn all of us together that we may hear from him and we may have information and that we may know what it is that he is planning for us why would God say to us that you I will show you my ways and I will let you know my thoughts and then he doesn't do it yes we have the word which is the word of life the Bible it is the inspired word of God but from that and the basis is the truth and once that is given God speaks to us. So welcome everybody from all over the world. We know that there are many, many of you that have come to attend the prophetic alert and so on. That's why I'm standing here today and I'm going to share a few things before we move into the next realm. Many of you have heard what I had to say and given you the instruction about the fact that you have been struggling to get breakthroughs in your life. Look, you have prayers answered. Every day of our lives we have prayers that are answered. But sometimes we, are lay, we labor and we fight and we pray for something and then it doesn't happen. 
And we wonder why. Why is it being held back? Is there a season? Is there a time? We know that Ecclesiastes says that there is a time and a season for every purpose under heaven. Now we have to know that because some things are not released. And we heard on Wednesday that sometimes God holds things back for a certain time. I honestly believe that when I heard, when I was praying last Sunday, and I heard from the Lord, and He said to me, listen, I want you to tell my people that Moses struck a rock. Now, we know the story, and I've taught that. And then I want you to, and we literally did it, Terry did it, put a rock here. And you know, we, this has been the, a few months of rock, because we've spoken about Gideon, and his, the rock. We've spoken about the rock. We, we had an altar that was, was in front of us, an altar of incense. We had Hezekiah's wall, and we did these props simply to, to bring the reality of it visually to you so that you could realize that this actually took place thousands of years ago when the children of Israel were in a desperate state, maybe like many of you, maybe like our nation right now is in a desperate state. Maybe where you're living, it's in a desperate state, and you want to give up. You, want, you, you, you don't want to labor anymore. And we, we spoke about the fact that faith has to work. Faith without works is dead. And so on Wednesday, I shared the fact that we have a working faith. We have to work it so that our faith can work for us. Let me say that again because it's a great saying and it came from me. It goes like this. You have to work your faith so that your faith can work for you. Faith definitely moves the hand of God. Faith, a little bit of faith, Jesus said, can move a mountain. Now let's talk about this rock and mountain issue. A beautiful thing happened when God spoke to Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments or gave him the laws. It was written on stone. But we know what happened. Moses came down and he heard not the sound of victory, but the sound of singing. The sound of rebellion. They'd built a golden calf. And of course Moses took that which God had given to him. That very sacred law. And threw it down and it broke. But here's the, 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 the issue. That was the first law. It was almost representative of the first covenant that he made with mankind. Later on God would call Moses to come up to the mountain. And when he got onto that mountain, God, Moses said to God, please show me your glory. He said, For, because the people have seen your anger. The people have seen your wrath. The people have seen and heard you from the mountain. Lightning and thunder. We need to see another side of you. And God said these beautiful words to Moses. He said, there is a cleft in the rock. There is a cleft in the rock that I have made for you. And this speaks of Christ. So the first, the first stones that were written on were literally the first covenant that God made. It was broken. It was difficult to abide by. And so there is anger, there's judgment. That's all the people are seeing about God. But then there is a miraculous thing that takes, takes place. God tells Moses, if you want to have water, the people were dying. Millions of people were without water. If you want to have water, there is a rock and I will stand on that rock. I want you to strike the rock. Now this was an unusual thing for anyone to tell anybody. Strike the rock because that is where the water is coming from. And it's like it happened thousands of years later when Jesus was struck. But he was struck for a reason. That there would be a cleft in that rock so that you and I could, could hide. And God could reveal himself through Jesus Christ, the rock of ages. Moses walked over, and look, we've even done it. Moses walked over with his, with his staff. I've got my one from the garden. And he began to strike the rock. I don't know how many times he struck. But it's like you and I, before we know Christ, we strike at him. We attack him. We attack his followers. We attack his commandments. We attack his morals. And literally, we are striking to put 
a cleft in that rock for ourselves. Just think about it. How this typifies what he did for us. Moses was a true prophet because Moses was acting out what would take place one day thousands of years later. He struck again. And he struck again. Maybe when he struck the third time, there was no order. But that's what faith is, people. It is continually laboring and working and believing until one day there's a trickle. One day there's just a little bit of water that comes. I can imagine how Moses must have felt when a little bit of water came out. And he struck again and more came out. And suddenly it became gushing out. And he, and he saw God's miraculous provision. Today, I want that to happen for you. Today, I want you to know that I believe in what I'm doing. I don't believe that we should ever gather together with hundreds of thousands of people watching all over the world and have no purpose whatsoever. God wants to tell us something every time we gather together. Even though the Bible says that we are called, I am, to equip those beautiful people of God. That's you. The equipping does not only come by teaching and by words. It comes by manifestation as well. We started this just a few minutes ago and already the prophetic word has come to us. God already pinpointing what he's going to do in Israel. God already telling us what he's busy working with in the earth. Literally causing an eruption to take place, an earthquake to take place. For what purpose? There's got to be purpose. God has purpose in everything that he does. Come on now. And so we know that he said that now. He said, keep your eyes on these. It is to release a, a resource so that America will no longer rely upon the Middle East. America will no longer rely upon the oil and the resources that they have. But there is something even greater about to come. That's what we hear to hear. We want to know what the future is. I've told you this before and I'm going to say it again because it's mine. You're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now. You're somewhere in, in the, the future, future and, and you look, look much better, better than you say look right me. now. I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. The reason I make you say that is because most people think that we do not have a future. Because we have so many that are living on the mountain of judgment. Living on the mountain of distress. Living on the mountain of death and lightning and thunder. And wondering if they were ever going to get close to God. But there was another mountain. And that was the mountain that Moses went to. God called him up there. And Moses said, I'm not doing another thing until you show me your glory. I want to see something that we have not seen yet. And God said to him, you've struck the rock. And therefore, I have created a cleft in this rock. And I'm going to pass by. And I'm going to declare to you who I am. Now listen to this, please. He declares to Moses, merciful, good. The Bible actually says he caused all of his goodness to pass before Moses. The new covenant is about his mercy. The new covenant is about his grace. The new covenant is about his hand extended. That you would not be afar off like the children of Israel were at the first mountain. But that, at that, that mountain of mercy, God said, come, come closer to me. Because in a covenant that I'm going to make with you, you are going to be able to stand face to face with me like a friend. And that's going to be because of a blood that would be spilt. He, he perfected everything. Instated the, the Passover and the laws that were placed in Exodus. So that you and I could know today that he knew what he was doing when he stood before Moses. Moses being the meekest man on the face of the earth. Where am I getting to? I'm trying to show you that that same spirit and that same revelation is here today. So that you can also have a breakthrough. It may not be a huge stone that, you get, that you've been smashing out, but there's something that needs to happen that has not happened for you. There's a barrenness that needs to be broken, out, broken over your life. So he's standing on the mountain. God puts him in the cleft of the rock. God passes by and declares to him, nothing negative. He says to him, my mercy, I am merciful. But let me tell you what happened. He first said to Moses, now you've broken the first one, the first stone. With my laws. 
So he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, he says in Exodus chapter 34. Then Moses rose early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and this is what he said. And this spoke of a new covenant. Think, of the, think about it. The first covenant. The first stones were broken. Death took place. Hundreds of thousands of Israelites were swallowed into the ground. The second covenant that he made represents today, represents us. He said to him as he passed by, he proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, the Lord merciful, the Lord gracious, the Lord long-suffering and abounding in goodness and in truth. Think about it. The very things that many, many preachers today are fighting and saying, no, we are on the other mountain. We are on the mountain where we want God to bring an earthquake and destroy millions of people. We are on the mountain that we want God to destroy California. We are on a mountain we want God to destroy uh, America. And there are those shouting from that mountain, but I have chosen to go to this mountain, the mountain of the second covenant. I've chosen to go to the mountain where God has declared to me that I'm abounding in goodness and mercy, that I am, I am kind, I am good, I am merciful, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression. I stand on that mountain. Where do you stand? I don't have a crowd here today, so I cannot hear the screaming and the, the, anc the, anc the encores out there. But I know that you are, because you're going to get away from that mountain. That mountain speaks of death. That mountain speaks of judgment. That mountain speaks of rebellion. That mountain speaks of people running away from God because they were so afraid of Him. Yeah. Moses did it right. He took the second tablets of, and he brought them to God. And God said, this is who I am. And I'm going to bring my blessing upon a thousand generations. And if there is a curse, it'll go to the third and the fourth generation. And that still can be broken. Today, whatever curse was started a generation ago can be broken over your life. Because of the second co covenant. Because of the second mountain. Excuse me if I sound a little preachy today. So Moses made haste and he bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, if I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, Lord, let my Lord, I pray, go amongst us, even though we are a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us as your inheritance. Yes. The covenant was renewed. He said, behold, I make a covenant before all your people. I will do marvels such as never been done in all the earth nor in any nation and all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you yes. you know as you're watching me you may be wondering and saying Kim you know what you just gave me a whole new thought about this day that I'm living in yep. a day of mercy a day of grace a day of love and purpose you're living in that day and yet you feel condemned yet you feel God doesn't care about you because he didn't answer you or things are not going quite the way you want them to go this is how we work and I'm talking about millions of warriors all over the world that follow me this is how we work we don't manipulate you telling you you've got to give so much money and you'll get so much out of it what we do is love it's called love. What we do is we first worship Him. We've already got so far, and He's already said so much, but He hasn't even started yet. He's going to say a lot more today. But listen to what I have to say to you. We will worship the Lord. Faith will begin to arise as you hear us making proclamations. And at a, at a certain point, I'm going to go to that rock. It's when I feel instructed to do it. And every one of you watching, there are two things that you're going to do. You're going to come before the Lord with your request. In other words, the thing that you have been, leaving, been believing for and has not happened and seems like it will never happen, it's been shut up. 
I want you to bring that specific request to God. I don't care how big that mountain is. And then what we are going to do is bring our offering and lay it upon the rock of ages, on the altar. Why must I bring an offering? Because God instituted something when He spoke to Moses and the children of Israel. He said, I want two offerings every single day. I want a lamb in the morning and I want one in the evening. Now, of course, that doesn't mean you give money morning and evening. It means you bring your praise, your prayers, your worship, but also your offerings. And when you come with something as difficult as your request may be, sometimes when you hand yourself to God, your heart, not sometimes, always, and you place your offering before Him, something begins to change. That's what I believe about giving to God. And we will do it in a few minutes. But what I want you to do is I want you to pray now. And let's prepare our hearts. Because when the time comes, we, I will walk over there and then we'll have the chance to give to God our offering. And I want every person to do something. Even if it's $5, do something. And then I want your request to be made known. And as I strike at this rock, I want you to believe with me that your striking is coming to an end. And that your work will be turned into a word. In other words, it won't be difficult to believe for that same thing. Now I know, I can sense there's a lot of faith out there. I can sense a lot of people saying, you you actually believe this can happen? I've just seen it. My little child, my two-year-old adopted child, who has a serious heart condition, was placed into heart surgery two days ago. Two days ago. They said it would take seven to ten days before she'd be restored. This morning, she was walking the the hallways of ICU. Look at her a day ago. She was walking. Look at her. There she is. I saw a miracle with my child in a 24-hour period. I saw the miracle. This morning, she was walking the hallways of ICU the nurses were saying this is impossible this has never happened I promise you they're saying it to us no I believe when I pray and I offer my offering to God when that child went in I saw it before my very eyes that which seemed impossible became possible the girl sang it did you sing it? not yet okay you're going to sing it (laughs) maybe I'm ahead of my time What is impossible suddenly becomes possible. That's the beauty of this. My little girl, Kimberlyn, whom doctors in China looked at and doctors in this nation said, this is a very difficult case. Came through it with flying colors and when the nurse turned her back on my girl this morning, she ripped her thing out. What's the thing? IV IV out. That's how crafty she was and faith filled she was. She takes after her daddy, for sure. And they wanted to put it back in again. And they said, you know what? We don't think it's necessary. This is, what, when did she do the surgery? Thursday. This is Saturday, people. Defied the odds. Listen to me. You can, uh, the same thing can happen. You know, I'm feeling it must happen now. The same thing must happen to you today. The very same thing that happened to me yesterday and today can happen for you. There is no doubt in my mind that you are going to receive what seems impossible today. I want you to pray with me now. Then we're going to go into worship. We're going to make a proclamation. And God, whatever He's going to say, He's going to say. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring our offering that you prayed about now and our request at that point in time and give it to God and hold up your request and you watch. He'll open up a well and He'll do it for you. That's not based on Kim Clement. That's based on the Word of God. Let's pray together. Every person watching all over the world, I want you to say this with me. Lord, I believe. I receive. I hear. And that faith that I'm hearing, that Word that I'm hearing is bringing faith to my heart. I believe that today water can come from this rock. That you can open it up. I've been working. I've been laboring. But I'm going to do something today called faith. 
speak to me now everybody say it speak to me now show me what I must place on this altar what my offering should be with my prayer and I will do it today now Lord I pray you'd speak to every person while we worshiping speak to them show them what they must do and when the time comes as they lay it on the altar and they lay their request I pray that you would give them the breakthrough that you promised even as I experienced it in the last 24 hours so shall you as well there we go that's it
a rage eruptions summer says why choose they me why do the tornadoes the hurricanes choose me I am summer I bring smiles I bring sunshine I bring warmth yet there is a tumultuous rendering that is coming. I stand to protect spring, but fall, you are rebelling. Or is it that possibly the Spirit of God will cause many to fall in fall? Then there is the earth that wishes to tremble. Shake! For the nations of the earth stand waiting. He is quiet. He shall not return. This God is too quiet. But my mercy endures forever. However, there is an uncovering of great evil. And I will start from the top. I have shaken the Democrats and will shake the Republicans even more. But remember when these tremors and when these tumultuous moments happen, Summer says, I will take it so that the fall can do its work. 
in America. The auto industry of this nation shall rise and they shall disappoint the expectations of the East. And they shall say, what do they have? Why does America still prosper? Princes of darkness and demonic powers are raging for these two extremely wicked terror organizations to be pierced with the sword of the Lord. Summer, take it. For thus says the Lord, I will prosper my people. And during the fall there shall be many that shall fall. And many that shall rise from the dust. earth is standing prepared I shall take it for the summer shall bring forth much in the temperatures strange July strange July hypnotic November and oh Christmas where winter shall say and me I will make them happy for God says I have chosen each season to manifest something my will shall be done and it shall come to pass that I shall bring sign after sign and in the fall that which comes down is that which was able to be shaken and I will build and release the resources and in the fall will show you whom I have chosen to pray for and guide this nation. You shall rejoice for it is my man. It is my chosen David, says the Lord. Come on. to raise your hands please you know this is so beautiful because when God speaks when God speaks we cannot deny that he has done it so many times but you know what I find so beautiful that he uses an example of Moses we made this this rock and you know I'm gonna do something I'm gonna ask each one of you you can, that's right. Each one of you to begin and prepare yourselves right now because this is what the Spirit said to me. He said, when I've spoken, when I release my truth, I want my people to come and give. But as they give and they present their offering and their request, we will strike at the rock and it's going to be noisy as a symbol. It's symbolic of your breakthrough now, I don't know where you are which part of the earth you're in but there are many of you that are saying Kim God just said incredible stuff what is he saying I will prosper my people and I will bless them if they will bless me now I've already you've already prayed early on and said you know what I'm gonna do what God told me to do you have the opportunity of a lifetime to release your faith in this moment right now so now what we're going to do we're going to do what i said earlier on we're going to pray ask him what he wants us to give and ask him to release the water from the rock or release whatever you need in your tough difficult situation let's pray father we have already sensed so much of your presence miraculously spoken about the nations of the earth spoken about this nation now i pray that you would take each person that is watching all over the world and you would receive the offering and their prayer there is no rock that can hold back 
what is rightfully yours. Now I pray, speak and show them what they must do. And as they give and act out their faith, do the miracle. Do the miracle, Father. Do the miracle, Lord. Do the miracle for them. Undertake for them. Deliver them. Reveal. Restore them. Heal them. Whatever it is, some of you are suffering from depression. Some of you are suffering from severe depression. I believe today that God will give you garments of praise for depression. Come on. For those that need joy, He's giving you joy today. Come on. Whatever it is, take it because God's power is present to heal and to touch you. Go. Over 40 years ago, Kim and I embarked on a ministry journey that has now become a global network through the power of the internet. As part of this pioneering work, we are gathering people from all over the world to worship together, grow in our faith and inspire hope through an uplifting message. We are dedicated to reaching out with God's message of hope and love to all without discrimination or judgment. We invite you to join our House of Destiny free membership that allows you to connect with members from around the world. Through our prayer wall, you can post your requests and have others join us in prayer. It's so powerful when the saints gather and believe for a breakthrough. We invite you to join today. Simply click the online church login and sign up. Partnerships are vital to our global outreach, enabling us to take the love and hope of Jesus Christ to those who need it most. Our Boots on the Ground partnership program physically ministers to those in desperate situations all over the world. The Israel partnership furthers Kim's legacy of outreach to Israel and Jewish people worldwide. We invite you to become a partner today. We are here for you and we have worked hard to provide the resources and tools to help you grow in your faith. Join us today and be part of a community that inspires hope, brings restoration to life and often healing from the past. Together we can make a difference and we thank you for your ongoing support. I'm excited to announce we're having a huge MyPillow spring sale. And here's a few examples. Buy one of our MyPillow 2.0s, you get another MyPillow 2.0 absolutely free. Made with cooling technology, the best pillow ever just got even better. 
And this just in, nine brand new colors and styles of our Percale bed sheets. They're made with the finest long staple cotton, and now you can save 50% or more. That's as low as $24.98. And for the first time this year, I'm bringing you our My Slippers and Sandals for as low as $25 a pair. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your MyPillow 2.0s. Buy one, get one free. Percale sheets as low as $24.98. My slippers and sandals as low as $25 a pair. And for a limited time, when you order $75 or more, your entire order ships absolutely free. We here at the House of Destiny are partnering with you to let our, our viewers, of course, know about your company. It's Beverly Hills Precious Metal. Andrew, explain how that works. So I'll walk you through it right now. So if you go to bh-pm.com, right there on the homepage, you'll see a form that you could fill out. And that form is very important in letting us know how we can help you. So you just put in your first name, last name, email address, phone number. There's a section that says, how did you hear about us? And in there, put Kim Clement. And then there's a portion where you could write a couple of notes down on the bottom. Usually within about, about 24 to 48, 48 hours, we'll contact you by phone call. And then we'll go over everything with you. This isn't a high pressure deal. We always recommend that uh, if you feel uncomfortable, take a step back, pray about it. You will gain the answers that you need by doing that and come back to us when you're comfortable.